think every cinematographer will agree, every cinematographer that likes to operate will agree that you become the, a character in the scene. So you're just acting along with the actors as well. Like you're reacting off of them. Getting up in it and like being part of it is so much fun. My name is Reed Morano and I'm a DP and a director. One of the first films I shot on the Alexa was Shut Up and Play the Hits, which was like a concert documentary about uh, the band LCD Sound System. You have I knew I was going to have to be run and gun and sort of make the light work wherever I was. I wasn't really going to have a lighting crew, and it was going to be Verite and a lot of shooting the front man, James Murphy, in his apartment and just like in his life and, you know, where your only tools are opening and closing the blinds or like maybe putting up some like duvetina on a wall, basically, which I found that the Alexa was really useful for. And I remember when we were shooting the actual concert, we cleaned out all the Alexas in New York City and there was like none to be found and we had to like start sourcing them elsewhere. And because I think it was right kind of at the beginning. I think we had like 10 Alexas. I was roaming around and supposed to stay with James Murphy and was able to go on stage with him and shoot and... That was actually pretty incredible, like freedom. I mean, I act, I did use prime lenses, which was very tricky when you're shooting a con, you know concert doc on the run. But everything else about it was pretty great because we had there was a lot of like you know LED lighting and whatnot going on, and it was sort of easy for us. There was no unknowns, and it was nice to be able to see what I was getting right away and controlling that. And everything just looked really phenomenal. I think I had a learning curve with digital, and it took me, I would say, probably till I got to Meadowland to, to really be happy with how it looked. Meadowland is the story of a couple, pretty much within the first five minutes of the movie, their son goes missing, and it picks up a year later, and he's still missing, and there's no answers. So it's a, it's a film about this weird purgatory, being in a weird purgatory where you don't know if you can grieve or not. Meadowland, which was the film I directed, I also uh, DP'd it and operated, and that was Alexa. I did originally want to shoot that movie on film, but then when I when my producers were like, no, it's not happening, and I realized I needed a certain amount of days, and I started thinking like a director, and instead of just like a DP, I knew that if it got me more days of shooting, it would make a lot more sense. And there was that unknown of like, can I split my brain and operate the camera and think about the story and the emotions and find the emotion in the shot, which, but then there's so much of that is part of what an operator does already. A lot of people told me not to do it. A lot of other DPs told me not to do it. Um, someone who had done it told me that he would never do it again. I got like a lot of warnings to not do it. But I was, I just had this weird feeling. I was like, I'm a mom, I have two kids and I work full time. Like I could probably do both jobs. And then I took a chance and did it. I was DPing with my eyes closed and the other stuff, I was just concentrating on directing. I just happened to have the camera on my shoulder. There were moments in Meadowland, for example, where I was holding the camera and I'd reach out and I could touch Olivia, you know? And that affected her performance. It's about being in the moment, you know? And that's what actors, they have to do. They have to be in the moment. And it's kind of nice if the director's forced to be in the moment, too. Don't leave me! It might just keep getting darker. We also used the um, Ari Master Anamorphics on that film. And I think we were the second film to use the Master Anamorphics. For me, I have a very strong reaction to Shape of Boca. You know, the idea of having that sort of oval-shaped Boca that had this interesting character to it. I just thought it was a nice combination and it would look pretty and maybe it wouldn't be, you know, like I'm not trying to emulate film, uh, but, you know, it it's, would be its own interesting, cool look. I was so happy at the end of that movie. I didn't feel like I sacrificed anything at all. I don't get upset anymore when I have to shoot digital because I know I can make it look a way that I'm happy with and I don't feel like I'm making a sacrifice because there was a little, I was a little depressed for a while, I'm not gonna lie. And then when the Alexa came out, I do remember it was like a bit of a turning point because I was like, oh, this actually already on its own looks like worlds above anything else that I've seen 
that's video or, you know. But also to go back and shoot film with the knowledge that I've picked up on digital is a whole different experience. Trusting myself more and like trusting my gut more. And I think it's because of experimenting so much on digital that it actually empowered me and like gave me the confidence. Why does it have to just be one? Why can't we have many tools in our toolkit? Because there's different sh needs for different shoots and there's definitely different movies that I would say I would rather shoot digital on because of X, Y, and Z. Right now is a great time for filmmakers because you have both options. Digital may have refined my lighting overall because I had to be better at it to make it look good. You know, and now it's like, it's just easier and easier because each new generation of camera, you know, coming out, it's like, it just looks nice, you know?